Hey guys, it's ISO here, and in this video I'll be talking about the best gear for leveling for a different set of levels, and there'll be timestamps throughout the video, you can just skip to them if you're at that level. Keep in mind, this is just a general video guide for people who are leveling or questing. I will not be going in-depth into some secret gear that you might not know about, it's just a questing gear guide for players who are questing right now or are new or coming back to the game. So this is, so this is mostly a, a video for like people who don't have the information. And keep in mind, I will not be going through deck setups or anything. I'll just be talking about the gear for the different levels. And I'll also mention some pets that could help you in questing. But yeah, this is for people who just want gear and want to get to max as quick as possible. And the gear that I think would help them get there the fastest. So for the first category, we have gear from level 1 through 30. I believe that gear from level 1 through 30, you should just use Bizarre Gear. Uh, bizarre Gear goes up in levels every 5 levels. Let me show you here. For example... Um, at level 10, you want to run any gear that gives you HP, accuracy, or damage, depending on what school you are. For example, Storm. Storm, you want damage and accuracy. That's going to be your best stat while questing. Uh, for something like life, you want damage and pips. And yeah, that's going to be it. It goes up every five levels. So level 10 to level 15 to level 20 to 25. And... At level 30 is the next set of gear. But yeah, for the first uh, levels, first 30 levels from 1 through 30, you want to use Bizarre Gear. Just use anything that gives you a lot of HP and a little bit of damage and accuracy or damage and uh, power pips. Uh, as for the pet, I think you should just have any pet that gives you a faint or a pet that gives you a blade of your school. It doesn't matter. They don't need to be trained up. Stats will matter later on. But for now, the mobs are pretty easy to kill. Kill. And you just want to use Bizarre Gear from level 1 through 30. As for level 30, you want to use gear from Mount Olympus, which is this dungeon in this world called uh, Aquila. You get this quest from Cyrus Drake once you heal, hit level 30. It's going to start a quest line for you. It's going to say, go to Cyclops Lane and talk to Romulus. And that'll give you access to Aquila. And at level 30, you'll have access to Mount Olympus. And with Mount Olympus, you can get the second tier of gear which is the senator's gear and i'll put that up on the screen and the best drop is from the final boss zeus he drops the best gear for level 30 and this gear actually lasts you a very very long time uh i can put the stats up on the screen it's very very good i'll show you gear for storm and i'll show you gear for life because you know some people say it's harder to quest for life and some people say it's easier to quest for storm but you can see it's good for both of those schools yeah, but I think level, uh, Mount Olympus, the Zeus gear, gives you the best stats for leveling from level 30 to 60. Uh, also, at level 30 from the uh, Mount Olympus dungeon, there's actually a guaranteed drop, uh, which is the Skyrim Hosta, and I believe it drops from Ares, which is the second to last boss uh, from Zeus, which is the final boss, and the wand actually gives you 10 damage, and it actually lasts you a very, very long time. So... Uh, if you're not going to farm for the Zeus gear or the Senator's gear, uh, that's a great pickup. I think you should definitely pick that up. It would help you a lot. And as for rings, athames, and decks, it doesn't matter. Just use any deck with space. Uh, any ring with HP and power pips works at this level because you don't have damage on rings yet. So just get anything with HP and power pips. For example, this one right here, 85 HP, 12% power pips. Athame, uh, same rule. Anything with HP and power pips because you want to get power pips, use your cards faster. And HP is also an important stat. You don't want to die if you're solo questing. So yeah, just use anything that gives you HP and power pips. Uh, I do think you should value HP over power pips. As for amulet, you can use whatever is available to you. Any high damage card one or anything that gives you a buff. For example, this level 25 necklace gives you a storm bubble. You can use that. Uh, ice bubble or a high damage card like skeletal pirate. Anything that's utility based or just high damage. So as for level 60, uh my opinion waterworks gear is the best gear uh you can get the quests uh from this guy blad raven eye he gives you a quest called under pressure and it leads you to the uh, the dungeon in crab alley and that's where you do the waterworks dungeon and you get your waterworks gear i'll put a few images up on the screen for different schools and what it looks like uh that's for the hat robe and boots for the wand you still should be using the sky iron hosta because 10 damage it's a lot of value uh but yeah, this guy gives you the quest, and once you go there, you can do the dungeon. Let me go there right now. Uh, you can do Zigzag, which is another level 60 dungeon in Krakatopia, given by Al Hazred, I believe. But I feel like 
it's the dungeon is long and if you're trying to quest fast and get to a high level i think you should do waterworks especially uh since there's a respawn glitch in waterworks uh you can look that up uh you can just respawn the boss over and over again with the team and just keep farming the final boss until you get all three pieces of the gear you need but yeah uh, if you're too lazy to farm waterworks like me and you just want to quest as fast as you can you can actually craft some pretty easy to craft gear from uh this npc in uh, winter tusk in sudryland uh his name is karak strong thread and this is the chieftain's gear and i think this is really good gear it's essentially like a slightly watered down waterworks you lose like maybe one damage it's, i don't think it's that much of a stat loss uh the hat actually gives you a gives you a blade as well and it's different from your normal blades you can stack it the ropes give you a trap uh the boots give you bubble so i think it's a really good alternative if you want to you know skip the farming waterworks and i think it's really easy to craft as well like these reagents are pretty easy to get you can just farm them like just pick them up in different spots like look up videos for them or you can just uh ask people to sell them to you you know through trading discords or you can even you'll probably have some of these just from questing and stuff like Perfect Jade and Pristine Vial, you know, you can just buy these from Reagent vendors and uh, different worlds. But I think this is a really good alternative if you don't want to farm uh, Waterworks gear. But keep in mind that you do need to craft this at the Grizzleheim crafting station. So an equipment crafting station won't work. So you have to go to the specific place. I don't know why it's set up like this, but it just is, I guess, was just wanted it. So when you're in Northgard of Grizzleheim, there's actually a place called Hall of the Ice Forge. Uh, I'll show you how to get there. You just walk up, take a right here, and you'll see like the fishing guys. One up there, one right here, and you just take these little stepping stones, go into the Hall of the Ice Forge. And once you buy the recipe from the NPC in Sudreland, you come up here and you just, it'll be here, available for you to craft. And that's how you craft the Chieftain's Gear really good alternative to waterworks i think it's amazing yeah and it's definitely for the lazy people out there like me as for athames and rings uh there's a recipe vendor in vestryland uh right here and uh what's it called winter tusk who gives you recipes for athames and uh rings and you can actually use these because they give good pips uh great hp you know incoming outgoing power pip chance damage all that good stuff and they actually give you energy you know if you want if you want to train your pet while you're while you're leveling it but yeah you can craft these i think the best one i'd say is definitely uh winter tusk ring of valor because three damage 15 percent power pips which is a lot and it's not as hard to craft as you think the diamond might be a little bit of a problem but it's really up to you uh level 56 and you also do have to use the grizzleheim crafting station that i mentioned for the last part uh and as for athame you can use whatever gives the most pips and damage so garnet bear claw but yeah, these are really uh, good uh, rings and athames. As for alternatives, if you don't want to craft, uh, if you go to Winter Tusk, there's two bizarre athames. There's a level 50 one and there's a level 56 one, which I'll put some images up on the screen. You might not find them in the bazaar because everybody runs them and they actually last you for a lot of levels. So if you go here, there's a side quest in Rundle Fjord uh, where you have to Unf like you have to what is it called thaw like the frozen villagers here and one of them actually unlocks uh this guy the athem and ring vendor and he lets you buy athemes and rings for your school so at level 50 you get these athemes that give you damage and power pips so these are going to be your first damage athemes like actual good damage athemes with power pips you can run these as well for example uh raiden's uh, amethyst talent eight damage for storm it's better than the garnet claw but for some schools like ice you want to use the garnet claw because it's just more damage and the ring is the same thing power pips and damage so if you're level 50 you can actually grab this and simply just use this gear uh or there's lo level 56 at things as well but it's like really really rare to find in the bazaar i'll put some stat lines up on the screen right now and yeah it's really good you're gonna hold on to that for a long time so, so far we have waterworks gear for level 60, or if you want to skip that, uh, you can run level 56 chieftains gear crafted from the NPC in Sudryland. As for Athames and rings, you can get the crafted ones in Vestryland, or you can get the uh, Athames and rings, the bizarre ones, the sellable ones. The level 51, you can get it from uh, the NPC in Rondo Fjord after you do the unfreezing side quest, or you can try to hunt the level 56 one down in the bazaar. 
uh, as for amulet uh, you should use I personally think these are the best ones. They're a little bit expensive on the gold side though, but you should have a lot of gold from questing unless you're using it all up on something. I don't know, but it, the amulets actually give you a, what's it called? They give you a 45 damage blade, which, so it's like a sharpened blade you can get at level 60 since you don't unlock sharpened blade until like level 85 or something like that. So if you come all the way over here, this is in Zafaria, the Bay of Bad Market. If you come over here to marwa jade tuck tusk and you click on equipment shop uh she has the shango amulets they give hp and they give you a, a blade card actually and if you look at this the blades are oh it's 35 for storm wow that's really sad because for ice it's 45 for fire it's 40 oh so it's like different for your school but a 45 blade for ice and a 40 blade for fire that's really good uh for myth it's 40 for death it's 45 for life it's 45 so yeah but even if it's it costs 50,000 gold around and it's a free blade and a lot of HP and it's really good I do want to mention that you can farm the house of scales gear but I feel like the drop rate and how long it takes to farm it is not worth if you're trying to progress fast in the games which levels I'll put up a picture of some of the gear it's just waterworks gear, but it's slightly more offensive I don't think it's worth farming if you're trying to quest you know I just think water works for chieftain's gear is just better for how quickly you'll get out of this level and i don't want you to waste time or anything but yeah now we're on to the next tier so at level 90 the only thing that'll be changing from your water works gear or your chieftain's gear and that whole set that i mentioned in the last part is actually just your ring and athame i think these are definitely worth farming for how much of an upgrade they are i'll put it i'll put them up on the screen i think the blade of the fell titan and the alpha omega ring are great great pieces you can add onto your set for example, the Athame literally gives you 15 damage, which is an upgrade from your uh, Athame from level 56, I believe I told you to get. The damage ones, it's like 8 damage for Storm, goes up to 15 universal. It's a huge upgrade for a school like Ice. And the Alpha Omega ring, the 10 damage ring, it drops from a secret boss in Mount Olympus. I'll show you how to get there. So actually what you do is once you're in the dungeon, you walk over here and you go to the puzzle area and there's a room behind the puzzle area uh that has the boss it's a pretty hard boss but it's it's easy if you farm it with people or if you have like a max helping you go over here and, and in the puzzle room there's a room in the back you just go into that room uh pit of noxy yeah and this is the boss that drops it he also drops an enchanted armament pet which gives you a sharpened blade card which can it's, it just adds another buff to your arsenal and helps a lot with questing. But the good thing about this specific room is that you can actually port people in here. So if you just go in and, you know, ask somebody to help you, they can just port in here and you can do it with them. And yeah, just farm this guy. He'll give you the Alpha and Omega ring. And the next part, it is the Blade of the Fell Titan. Uh, as for the Blade of the Fell Titan, it drops from uh, the secret boss in Tartarus, which is the final dungeon in Aquila. So after you do... Uh, Mount Olympus at level 30 you actually get a quest to do Atlantia at level 70. I do not recommend getting the gear from here uh, I would suggest doing the quest once for the XP or the dungeon once for the XP but I do not recommend farming the gear here. It's just bad compared to anything else you'll have uh, After you finish that quest at level 90 you'll unlock Tartarus, which is the Hades dungeon I do not recommend farming the gear here because the dungeon is really long and it will replace this gear at level 100 anyway but I do recommend getting the Blade of the Fell Titan from here. And I'll show you how to get to the final boss. Or the secret boss, sorry. But yeah, the Blade of the Fell Titan is an amazing piece of Athame. I used this Athame when I was questing probably to like level 150, honestly. You could honestly use it to level 160 until you start farming for the Nova Skier, the best gear right now. The best gear for 160 right now. So once you walk in the dungeon, you go straight up here. And you go into the Cave of Nyx. Just here and this is the boss that drops at Kronos and you can farm it with people he's really easy just blade up trap him feign him and just kill him and he drops the blade of the fell titan it's a really really good at theme. you're gonna keep it for a long time so I strongly recommend farming this for questing but yeah this is what you want to change at level 90 the at theme and your ring that's about it okay as for level 100 I strongly suggest farming the dark more gear because I think it'll last you a while, at least until level 130 or 125. Uh, you get the quest from Dorgan, 
the death school teacher in Nightside and give you access to Darkmoor. You do have to be a level 100 to farm it. So you take this teleporter. And right here, this is Castle Darkmoor. You do have to go through uh, dungeons that are can be difficult, but it can definitely be done with three people or four people. When I was questing, I ran through the first two uh, dungeons with just me and my friend. It was really, really easy. Uh, so this is the first level. Then once you do the first level, you unlock the second level. At the second level, you'll actually get access to farm Shane Vaughn Shane, the final boss of the second level of Darkmoor. And it'll give you this amulet that's really good even until max because it gives you four pierce and it can actually be used in uh, certain max level setups. Uh, I'll put a screenshot of an example up on the screen. But for the gear itself, like the hat, robe, boots, even the wand if you prefer losing damage over and get pierced, but I don't think the wand's that worth it. Come here, you farm in the graveyard, the final boss, Malister, the Undying. There's a glitch for it. There's a Malister glitch where you don't have to do the part where he comes back to life. All you have to do is make sure three people are, make sure the, your teammates are in battle. Then you join after they're picking cards. You join after they're picking cards, Malister won't respawn, like after the card screen pops up. You just farm that until you get the hat, robe, and boots. And here's some screenshots of uh, that piece of gear, or they'll already be up on the screen. But I think that's what you should change at level 100. So, so far, you're going to be uh, running the full Malister setup with the Skyrim Hosta still. I know, level 31, why is this still good? It's just a really good wand. 10 damage is a lot of damage, and I think it's really worth it. Uh, I would say keep Blade of the Fell Titan. The first boss in Darkmoor does drop at an Athem, but I don't think it's worth farming because of the drop rate. But yeah, that's what I would recommend changing. At level 102, you get a deck from the Bazaar that gives you an extra pip. I do think you should pick that up. It would help a lot. But as for the rest of the gear, Malister set, Skyrim Hosta. And if you're down for it, you can farm Shane Von Shane in the second level for the amulet. But yeah, that's all you would change. Okay, so at level 115, uh, there's one thing I do recommend because you are still using the Skyrim Hosta. So you can actually craft a wand in the Arcanum once you're level 115, uh, which is like, I believe, after Polaris. Uh, some wands unlock for crafting in the Fire School uh, room. Uh, Ignis Ferret gives you it. Uh, let's look at the recipes. So yeah, these give you really good damage, really good damage, really good, uh, a decent crit, but really good peers. And the second tier versions actually give you energy and fishing luck, but I mean, that's niche. They look cool as well, by the way. Look at this. It looks really cool. You know, for each school, I do think this is worth crafting, you know, even for the aesthetics. Uh, they look cool. They give you a lot of damage, you know, level 115 replacement. But yeah, I think this is worth the craft for, look at this, 15 damage for ice, which is really good. Uh, but there are some wands that do drop in uh, Polaris, but I wouldn't farm those because you could just craft this and it can last you a while. But yeah, this is just a quick little thing you can change at level 115. Okay, as for level 130, I suggest farming uh, the catacombs for at least the second tier hat and boots. The Vanguard hat and boots, I'll throw a screenshot up on the screen. Uh, you can see what it's like. It's actually really good gear. Uh, gives you a lot of damage and if you can i would say farm uh, abandoned house the f this is like the first dungeon once you unlock the quest line you get the quest line from an npc in uh, golden court i believe because that's how you get here it's like a dog npc but yeah you farm this dungeon because this is what everyone farms especially during double crafting uh you just team up first two battles you just use an all hit the third battle you either faint or blade the hitter and just kill the boss and it gives you a certain amount of reagents that you can use to craft the third tier or you can craft the second tier then craft the third tier because you need the second tier to craft the third tier like the best one or uh, this boss drops the vanguard hat there are other bosses in the quest line that drop the vanguard pieces but i don't suggest farming it uh it's just the other bosses just aren't farmed by people as much and i don't think it's worth your time you're better off uh grinding that dungeon uh right there that i showed you abandoned house king detritus for reagents I think during double reagents, you get 14, um, what is it called? Alchemical, uh, oh, I can't say that word. There's like the salts, crystals, and something else. But here, I can show you the vendor once you unlock this area. 
uh, there's a recipe vendor over there and the pieces that i suggest crafting are the hat and the boots because they give you a lot of damage and a lot of crit and they actually give you a two seat two piece set bonus for example for ice they give you accuracy at two piece which is really really good like this dragoon's gear is really good uh some of this gear is actually used for end game content such as a raiding i actually use the dragoon's hat for storm uh for raid setups but yeah these are required reagents you do need the vanguard which is like i mentioned the tier two the hat the vanguard hat drops from king detritus so you might just get that while you're farming him for the reagents if you don't get if you don't get the hat you know you're gonna have to craft it i know it's more farming but it's just how it is and that boss king detritus actually drops all three of the these reagents but he gives you a lot of the extracts the extracts are guaranteed every time i believe during double crafting he drops 14 when it's doubled so it's like seven per run without it and 14 with the double crafting and he drops like three salts sometimes and like a couple of crystals or if you have or you can farm a lot of crystals and just uh get a lot of uh you can transmute it actually uh this person has the recipes for it as well so get the vanguard or dragoon hat and boots i also strongly strongly suggest getting the dragoon athame it's so good it's used in every situation i still use it in my max levels it gives you a four pip all hit two cards of it it's basically pre-enchanted it lets you get the set bonus and it gives you this strong four pip card that's pre-enchanted saving you space in your deck so you can pull your cards quicker making questing so much easier but yeah i think for level 130 you should get the dragoon hat dragoon boots and the dragoon amulet it'll help you a lot i don't think it's worth farming for the wand you can if you want but i still suggest sticking to the level 115 crafted one because it's pretty easy to craft this one can be pretty daunting because you don't want to you know you're already farming for so many extracts i don't think it's worth it so just get the hat boots and uh amulet and honestly if you don't plan on doing raids anytime soon you can just use the vanguard version of the hat and the boots and i strongly still suggest getting dragoon amulet because it gives you two cards instead of one vanguard gives you one but if you want to go with the vanguard you can if you think one is enough but yeah hat boots and amulet is what you want to replace if you don't want to farm the dragoon's gear you can actually just buy a piece of one level 125 gear from the bazaar uh it's called the cabal uh set and this was originally like it wasn't auctionable when this world first came out like you would have to farm for it like the cabal gear or like level 130 paradox gear but if you don't want to farm for dragoons i'd say run the cabal set power pip damage it's really good uh the hat gives you a lot of damage it's level 125 and you could buy it in the bazaar it might be a little expensive from what i remember um but yeah for example the storm hat give you like 28 damage which is pretty crazy for that level uh man the boots they give you a lot of crit and 32 damage some accuracy as well and yeah if you you know if you're feeling lazy you can literally just farm this i forgot to mention earlier but as for decks you want to use anything from the bazaar uh, up until honestly like level the max level there's like crit and pip uh decks in the bazaar that you can just use you can just go through for each tier there's like different decks it just gives you a pip and a little bit more crit you can just use any deck from the bazaar but here we are you're in uh what's this world called lemuria now um and you're gonna hit level 150 in this world there you can farm for the merciless gear but i don't think it's worth it because you're 10 levels away from 160 and you could just farm the aeon gear from there and aeon gear is literally just an upgraded version of merciless gear so i don't think you should waste your time you know farming merciless maybe farm it once or twice i'll put a screenshot of what bosses drop what up in the screen as for decks just get it from the bazaar you can farm for this gear but i strongly suggest just using what you have and just you know farming aeon gear at 160 however you can farm the malevolent hat i think if you're storm or fire because it does help you with like a max damage setup in the end game where you need perfect pips and a little bit of pierce uh, and that can be farmed from it's the second to last dungeon from the final dungeon in lemuria i believe scion of the old one and he drops the the malevolent hat but as for the full set i don't suggest farming it i suggest just keep questing you'll have enough damage i promise you'll have enough damage just get to 160 and just farm the aeon gear Okay, now you're in Novus. You're about to get 160. What do you get? 
right now you should just be using whatever gear you have for example just the dragoon's hat boot and like the master robe i again once again i do not suggest farming merciless you know but if you do want some gear to help you because if you're struggling or something you can throw in a little bit of crowns into uh what's it called the professor's horde pack you know get the it's get the uh, professor's gear it's just a copy of merciless gear at 150. Uh, you can get that but again just get 160 and farm novice gear I'll put a screenshot of who drops what on the screen if you get the second tier of the gear you can actually craft it from this vendor down here you do need to be level 160 to craft it and you need to have all these things ready polygons and pixels there's videos out there guys out there showing you how to get it but this is essentially the best gear for this level you're you made it you're in the end game now you just experiment with different setups and see what you like yeah guys that's it for the leveling guide the gear guide honestly all the gear that i mentioned is really the only ones you should be farming for because everything else it just feels so niche and you replace it so quickly things such as like you know i don't know tower of the hell thank gear or like hades gear you don't want to farm for that you replace it so quickly the stuff i mentioned in this video it'll last you a while and it's very effective and it's not as hard to get you know it's for people who aren't like super try hard they just want to level and they want something to farm uh, along the way that'll help them with leveling and i think these pieces of gears are like the best to level quickly and you know efficiently you know you don't want to spend like hours and hours on farming hades gear because the dungeon's like really long or something just to replace it in 10 levels i don't think it's worth it i think you should do you should use the gear that i've mentioned in this video but yeah guys uh, yeah, that's it for the guide. And that's the best gear you can run while leveling from 1 through 160. Uh, thanks for watching. All the information will be in the spreadsheet down below. Uh, credits to my friend who made it. Uh, I'll put his name down in the description. I'll link the spreadsheet as well. I got my screenshots from there. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Hit the subscribe button.